Welcome in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. The more one travels, the better America looks. That isn't to say that other countries do not have lessons to teach us in living. They do. And all of us should see how the other half lives. Not only to improve our own lives, but to recognize how lucky we are. Particularly if you penetrate the Iron Curtain, as Carol and Andrew Lake do in the story we're about to bring you. What's the line for? Immigration or customs? Neither. Security. On our way in? <laughs> they wouldn't trust their own brothers. In the socialist states, all men are brothers. Well, I'll see you beyond the Grey Curtain. Hope you keep the faith. <laughs> Mystery drama, Passport to Freedom, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Paul Hecht. It is sponsored in part by True Value Hardware Stores and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Carol and Andy Lake are two clean-cut young Americans, reasonably well-to-do residents of Vienna, Virginia a middle-class suburb of Washington, D.C. Carol's active in church affairs, and she's a den mother, although she has no children yet of her own. Andy's some kind of lawyer in a vague department of the government. Bowls on Wednesday nights with a regular group. He's active with the J.C.'s, normal as blueberry pie. Two ordinary young Americans, right? Wrong. This is Andy's real work. And on occasion, Carol shares it. You sent for me, C.K.? Oh, sure, Andy. Sat somewhere. Oh, I can't take it standing up. Didn't you have a beard that I remember? <laughs> yeah, it's hard to forget. That's the only thing that made Carol consider leaving me. How fast could you grow it again? Well, a month, maybe. You start growing it today. Oh, yes, sir. Well, what's the beard for? Let me show you a picture. Here. Hmm. That look familiar? No. Uh, oh, yeah, so, somehow. Vaguely. Hey, wait a minute. Without the beard, if he was blonde and blue-eyed, he'd look pretty much like me. Huh? Which is just why you got tapped for this assignment. Uh, who is this joker? His name is Ujen Zotescu. He's a Rogarian. And as of what turns up in the next month, he may be the answer to what the energy crisis is all about. Wow, that big, huh? It could be just that big. Is it okay to ask how? I have the best I have. There's a great deal of oil in Rogaria. Now suppose, just suppose, there's a new way to crack the oil. To produce an infinitely superior product from crude which would double the efficiency of the well. Hey, that's a wild dream. No dream. But in the next few weeks, it could be a fact. If it is and our side wants the results, we are going to have to get Mr. Zotescu out of Rogaria. Do they know behind the curtain what he's working on? Too right. Hey, you're not asking much, Chief. What's the M.O.? That's simple. You grow a beard, we dye dark for you, also your hair. Add colored contact lenses to make your eyes brown. You and Carol book a 30-day and advance one-week excursion cruise. You get into Rogaria, we make the contact for you, you turn over your passports, and who James Otescu uses them as his passports to freedom. Hey, hey, now wait a minute. How come Carol, too? He has a wife to bring out. Who looks like Carol? You know, chance we got to take. Well, how about our chances? How do we get out? No problem. Uh, famous last no, words. No, 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 Otis. You shave off your beard, wash out the dye, take out the contact lenses, and come back on a passport of your own that we issue, complete with entry visa. And yeah, what if something goes wrong? The chances we take, that's our business. But you've always been resourceful, Andy. Yeah, trusty, loyal, helpful, a grown-up boy scout. I don't like getting Carol involved. Yeah, neither do I. We have to get the wife out, too. That's the deal. And the risky part. You pegged it. <sighs> but to find a way to step up the oil supply by two. Ah, that's the beauty part. Okay, CK. As of today, I stopped shaving. And let me know when I booked our vacation. The neighbors like to know such things. Yeah, I'll be in touch. Oh, uh, just one other question. Sure. 
All I do is spring this guy, huh? No papers, nothing else. Now, Zotesco has it all over his head. But, uh, a little microfilm never hurts. Not with him. Yeah, I'll read you. And with me, if I can get it. That's the way I'd figure it. Okay, when do we leave? Oh, any time after your beard. Looks like you'd always had it. Can do. I just wish I was as sure of convincing Carol the beard was necessary. So tell her why. Yeah, I think I better. You going to soak in that bathtub forever? Uh, I've been considering it. You saw C.K., didn't you? Watch it. You honestly think our bathroom could be bugged? Watch it. I'll meet you by the pool as soon as I dry off. Honest to Pete. Which side of the curtain are we on? And I'm going to be stuck with that scratchy old beard again. Oh, the call of duty. Yeah. I don't know if I like the sound of that. Yeah. I'm not sure I did either. Well, it's more and more ominous. What did it have to say? Something about marriage. About how long do we go on with this cloak and dagger bit? And when do we start to live our own lives? Hey, has it been all that bad? By me, it ain't been all that great. Us? Okay. But I... I have other notions. Like small carols and Andes. Do you see them in your picture? Well, I gotta face it. Not right now. How long, oh Lord, how long? <laughs> You're right, hon. But look, this is it. Once more into the breach... And out. It has to be even once more. Well, it's a special situation, Carol. I, I promise you, it's it's really the last time around. You wouldn't just like to quit while you're still ahead. I can't duck this one. Oh, cheer up, honey. It may never come around. <laughs> Here we come. I guess it was just faded. Stop playing, Cassandra. It's the way I feel. Don't do it, Carol. You're infecting me, too. Now, look. This is a breeze. We just check in, turn over the passports, and we're home free. That's great. Only how do we check out again? No problem. We use our own passports. Well, it looks good on the face of it. What's such a big deal about this Zotesco? I thought I told you. I'm a bird brain, don't you remember? All right, here's the general picture. Now, you dig oil out of the ground, right? It's still raw. It has to be refined to be of any use. But the oil that makes the gasoline that runs the world is the last step in this refinement. Yeah. Now, to crack it down, it takes huge installations, holding tanks 12 feet in diameter, 150 feet high, heat shielded by walls maybe two, three feet thick. Oh, and I thought I'd just ask a simple question. You want a simple answer? You got one? Yeah. Now, by using high-voltage diathermy for heat, it is possible, under lab conditions, to experiment in small epoxy fiberglass containers. And that is how Zetescu is near his breakthrough. Which is good for our side. Darling, if he made this breakthrough, it is so good for either side that a lot of heads could roll just to control it. Including us. Well, I didn't mean to put it exactly that way. But you did. Andy. Oh, well, I, I guess we're in, but... Oh, let's get out just as fast as we can. Uh, no argument for me. All right, let's get some sleep. Huh? We got 14 hours against the clock to live up or down to. Andy, what's the line for? Immigration or custody? Neither, dear. Security. On our way in? <laughs> They wouldn't trust their own brother. And in the socialist state, all men are brothers. See you beyond the gray curtain. Hey, what took you so long? The sisters don't trust each other either. What? Talk about being gone over with a fine tooth comb. Yeah, I got thoroughly frisked too, but it didn't take me that long. <laughs> well, what's so funny? <laughs> Her, the jailer lady, or whatever she is. It, you know, it's kind of sweet, too. just goes to prove it doesn't matter how much you regiment people or stick them in uniforms and give them guns. They're still human. Uh, honey, I am all for philosophy and a continuing dialogue between man and wife, but, but not right now. You asked the question. It was my feet, that's all. Your what? My feet. Now, you know I wear size three. 
Oh, I guess this is another country where I won't be able to buy shoes either. You know, I sometimes get the feeling I, I've lost a hand on me. I mean, I mean, I hear your words, but they don't add up. You don't have to be sarcastic. This fat little dame in there went all over me, and then suddenly she was fascinated by my feet. I thought she figured I was carrying plastic explosive between my toes. But all it turned out was that she never saw feet that small. Tell you the truth, I wish I had never either. I love your little feet, Cinderella, but uh, let's just move them so we can get through immigration. I'm going to be a little nervous till that's over. Security, immigration, customs. Now what? Now we just follow the tour director's orders. We get our one-week visa stamped. Then? Then tour bus to the hotel. Alone at last, except for Big Brother's watchful ear. All conversations conducted in the shower or with the radio on. If we've got one. And if we don't, we do a lot of walking in the open air so we can speak freely. But how do we contact, uh, you know who? We don't. It's like they say in showbiz, don't call us, we'll call you. you'd gone home. As you see, not yet, Comrade Technician Barrow. Is it permitted to ask something? It is always permitted to ask. I was only wondering, since you are working so late, Professor Sotescu, if you feel you are near the breakthrough. As to that, Comrade Technician Barrow, I can only say... While the motor hum keeps the microphones listening, the answer is yes. Then the timing is perfect. There is a flaw. I am afraid the mug does suspect... We must meet and talk in my house, side door after dark. But your wife? I will take care of my dad. Don't worry. Just uh, tripped a switch by mistake. Oh, I'm sorry, Professor. You should be. By now, you ought to know enough to be careful around the electric equipment. Any more clumsiness, and I shall have to put you on reports, comrade. Uh, I think maybe I'll take a bath, uh, Carol, or will you join me in a shower? I was curious what Miss Durza wanted. I want to get some of the kinks out after that long plane ride. Uh, the guide, oh, uh, she just wanted to remind us about dinner tonight and the free cocktail. I thought I saw her. Uh, keep your voice down, darling. Everything is bugged. All the comforts of home. You don't think they suspect it? No, no, it's routine. But one Rugarian is on to us. The tour guide? Uh -huh, she's our contact. He slept me this. What does he say? Uh, you might like a stroll in the park in front of the museum just across the street. I will bring you, if you stay too long, your tour guide, the Sturza. Can you trust her? Uh, in this business, hon, you don't trust anyone. You do what has to be done. Uh, like getting rid of this. Your fingers crossed, no one gets the chance to pull the chain on you. Behind the Iron Curtain, secrecy, suspicion, and the total lack of privacy is a way of life. It's hard for us to imagine that everything, everything that is said finds its way to a permanent record on computer tapes. Unless you find some method of circumventing the electronic ear, which two secret meetings hope to do. Will they succeed? We'll find that out when we return shortly with Act Two. One of Europe's loveliest and gayest countries is drab and gray today. Its people subdued, regimented, remote. Still, there are advantages. Few cars in the streets, so less pollution. And the lovely gardens and parks, for Lugarians love flowers and grow them everywhere. The parks and the streets have another advantage. You can talk freely with nothing to fear but the human ear. There are some boutiques over there I'd like to go and browse through. I might find some shoes. I doubt it. Rugarian women seem to start at size 7 minimum. Okay, for you. You don't have my problem. Oh, well, I don't know about that. I've heard about it ever since I met you. 
Hmm. You know, you should have been born in the Ming Dynasty in China. Huh? With a size three, you wouldn't have had to have your feet bound to achieve perfection. Just let nature take its course. Very funny. Any chance we can wander over and see if maybe some unsung Regarian copper has added art to nature and made a shoe to fit me? Uh-uh. we got to wait for Diana Sturza. She could find us over there. Uh, we couldn't talk freely in the stores. Let's keep it in the open. Oh, I still don't believe it. It's a fact of life, Carol. But who would have time to listen to everything everyone ever said? Well, nobody does. It's just a, it's a spot check. So you never know when you said the wrong thing at the right time till the knock comes on the door. Oh, it's spooky. Yeah. Oh, watch it. Here she comes. Ah, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Lake. I am looking for you. Do you see? Oh, uh, yeah, I, I guess we do. Uh, we, we did something wrong? Oh, no, no. But I was gathering the tour together, and you were missing, so I look out and see you are here, and I come to tell you that it is mostly time for dinner. And, uh, Gracias. And the number? Thirty. Over and out. Okay, we've exchanged the passwords. We're all set. Oh, now, now we must talk quickly. The transfer will take place at the end of the week when we get the torture. Where? At the Danube Delta, towards the mouth of the river. When we stop for lunch and get off the boat, the other will be there. You must make the transfer then. And what about us? Remember this name, Nicholas Chismigui. Okay. It's like an old popular song, only so different. <laughs> Well, what do you mean? Yeah, it's easy to forget, but so hard to remember. Uh, Nicholas will do. He will take you to a cargo boat after dark, and they will smuggle you into Turkey. And Professor Zetescu, he will use your passport to get out as planned. Oh, by the way, you'd better keep it covered up as possible, Mrs. Lake. Am I so different from his wife? Oh, just playing it safe. Now, with the beard, your husband looks enough like Zetescu to be his twin. Okay, we're checked out. Just one thing. Yes. I'm puzzled. What's in this for you, Diana? You like my tour guide accent? Welcome to Rugaria. I do so hope you will find to love it. But you don't have an accent when you speak to us. <laughs> my mother and father came to America during World War II. I was born on Barrack Street, Lower 7th Avenue, New York. Then what are you doing? What's a nice girl like me doing here? My parents are dead, but my brothers, older sisters, and all their families are here. I made a mistake and came back to see them, so I'm here, too. But you're an American citizen. You could get out. I was, and I could. Now I'm not, and I can't. Uh, Diana, what can I say? Nothing. And I've said too much already. <laughs> is a hairdresser. I'm there having a touch-up. She let me out the back door. I suppose I must risk it. Come in. Oh, where's your wife? She's asleep. Brandy and the help of some drugs. It's so dangerous. If she knew about you or us. You know she would be the last person to be told. But she worries me. Some sixth sense. If she is any danger to us, Eugène... We cannot let her stand in the way. Good Lord, think what I am giving up and risking for you. It works both ways. What does that mean? The government knows more than any of us, doesn't it? You know you were placed in my department to be my control. Darling. Oh, Shane, that's past history. We both know it. How can I be sure that you are not still reporting on me? Of course you can't, because I am. My reports, as I give them, are the basis of our whole future. Don't worry. Uh-uh. Forgive me, my beloved, for my doubts. Oh, it is all we have to base our life on, doubt, till we escape. I know, I know. But if Magda suspects, if she makes any move, how can we? If she makes the slightest move, it must be stopped before it even begins. If not, we are all victims. Very well, we are agreed on that. Now, the timing. You must hold her off, however you can, Eugène. You know what that can mean? There's a lot of water under the bridge already. What does a little more matter so long as it carries us safely to the sea and freedom? You don't mind if I have to be with her? Oh, I have minded 
ever since our affair began, but I've had to accept it. I can manage to bear it as long as it's only temporary. I can promise you that at least. Oh, but aren't the Americans here yet? You said you'd made the breakthrough. Supposing I have not. That would be disaster for all of us. Why? If you meet the American agent and you have nothing to offer... Oh, how can we know that? A piece of film containing formulae which he would not be able to understand? <laughs> By that time, I will have the passports and we will be safe in America. Safe? With what? The future. What future? You know we can take nothing out with us but some borrowed American clothes. If we cannot offer them your formula, we have no security. Financially? I don't worry. I'm a scientist. Somewhere I can find a job. Are you mad? What kind? Even if the Americans would let you. Especially after double-crossing them. Anything is better than here. Oh, don't be too sure. Here at least we have influence. A measure of wealth. But no freedom. For some of us, maybe the price of freedom could come too high. If your spirits, little Mimi, the breakthrough will be made. When? In time, I promise you. In time. Anton! Anton! I thought she was asleep. So did I. Hurry, you must leave. But I... I will see you tomorrow. Leave everything to me. You know the promises you have to live up to. Of course, of course. Trust me. For the moment, I have no choice. Anton! Coming, you Be right there. I thought you were asleep. Why did you close the door? I didn't want to disturb you. Why? Who was here? Well, no one. I heard voices. Oh, ah, I guess it's one of my assistants from the laboratory. Oh, I can guess which one. It's her. Always her. I am not going to allow you to any more, Anton. No, Magda, you are not yourself. I am not myself since she made you someone else. It is all fantasy. It is only because you... Because I drink. What else do I have to make my life bearable? You could work for the state like all of us. I used to consider myself lucky that I didn't have to because of my family connections. Oh, now I'm sorry. Fred, you don't blame your personal problem on me. Oh, but I do, Anton, I do. You turned away from me. Magda, my work is very demanding. It takes all my energies. For the glory of the Republic, I have to spend... The every... devotion to party line won't put me off anymore, Anton. Once. Not now. Tell the truth. You no more care for our country Doctor, than... don't you realize that anything you say can... Oh, don't cringe, little rabbit. One thing my father has bought for us, if nothing else, is privacy. We can speak safely here. I don't believe it. Suit yourself. I have nothing to hide. Oh, no. The fact that the daughter of the party general commissar is an alcoholic, perhaps that should be her. It won't be. My father has the same embarrassments you have. But I tell you something, Eugène. What will be heard, unless we come to an accommodation, is the truth about you and Mimi Barrow. Uh, but uh, no, you can't stir up trouble, not now. Any time, if it's to hold on to you, Anton. Or find a way I can count on you. Which, supposing I... I am... Um... I could tell you there was such a way. By the end of this week, all arrangements have been made for our escape from Bulgaria to asylum in the United States. Oh? The plan is already in operation. It covers me and, uh, and, and you. In a week, we shall be free. You will never have to worry about the Mimi Barrao again. This is what has been torturing me for so long. So, oh. now you know. Do you believe in me? Oh. Oh, my darling. Oh, why should I have doubted you? Oh, it's, it's only because I, I love you so much. Oh, oh don't, don't worry. 
don't worry. I'll never be any trouble to you again. You think the final case, Professor Zabisky? You don't have to be so formal, Mimi. The short wave high voltages we are using to crack the oil would drown out any possibility of anyone hearing us. You have been avoiding me for days, Eugene. You just have to face it. Oh? What do I have to face? That was a mistake on my part. Everyone else has to face it except you. If? All, all the things it means. Have you made this great discovery? If you have, who do you give it to? Your country? What will it affect? And most of all for me. If you are running out, is it with me or your wife? <laughs> I can't answer any of your questions, Mimi. You have to decide between the two women in your life. Not until I have made the breakthrough. If that proves out, then it is time to talk about all the rest. And if it doesn't? I still run. I must. If I am to be a failure, I had rather be a failure on the Western standard. Would you still want to go with me, then? I think all I will say, Eugène, is you better not be. Is that a threat? Or a friendly warning? I let you decide. Isn't it enchanting, Andy? Oh, I found the museum kind of depressing. Depressing? How? Well, seeing what sort of people they were, or could they... Ah, oh, I know what you mean. All those costumes we saw from the various provinces and these colorful, delightful little village houses. Yeah. Chris, are you enjoying our village museum? Oh, yes, Diana. You get a taste of what we could be here. Diana, why don't you get out? It would hurt too many people. Besides, I couldn't. There's only one way out for me. Feet first. Diana. I'm sorry. Maybe I envy the fiscal too much. The rest of the tour is coming back. Um, tomorrow, we get to the Danube Delta. I think you will find it by far the most interesting part of your trip. Then, back to Otopen Airport and home. Except us. They take the high road and we take the low road. And if we can't be back in the good old U.S. of A. before then... I'll settle for right after. While we're on the subject of quoting Scottish verse, let's also remember another one written by Robert Burns. The best laid plans of mice and men gang after glay, which may be more descriptive of Carol and Andy's future than the first. Let's find out right after I return shortly with Act Three. It's axiomatic that any plan, whether for battle, for a philosophy of living, for economic advancement, or for the destruction of the world, can never be complete. For there is one element no one can fully gauge the human factor. And of all forms of that element, the most precarious and unforeseeable is the triangle. In this case, represented by Eugène Zetescu, his wife Magda, and his mistress, comrade technician Mimi Barao. You can stop right there, Eugène, before you go in. Mimi! Did you think you'd said goodbye to me that easily? What do you mean, goodbye? And not out in the open like this. We could be seen. Not by anyone that matters. There is always someone for away. Not tonight. Magda managed to arrange that for you, didn't she? I don't know what you mean. You know very well what I mean. Mimi, can't this wait for tomorrow? I can't risk Magda seeing us out here in front of our house in, in public. But you don't really have to worry about that anymore. Mimi, I beg you, please. You're only I... beginning to beg, Eugène. But you are right about one thing. Let's do it in private. Let's go in the house. In the house? You must be mad in front of Magda. I don't think she'll mind. I can't take you in there. I won't. I think you will. 
Move, no. Oh. That's... That's a gun. Yes, it is. Do you want me to take it out of my handbag and prove no, it? No, no. Then move. All right, all right. I'm moving. What are you trying to do? Protect my interests. I want to make sure when you go tomorrow, I go with you. Open the gate. Yes, yes, sir. What do you mean, go tomorrow? Oh, don't be childish. I know tomorrow is the day you plan to defect. Do you think I seriously believed you were just taking a little excursion to the Danube Delta to lull your wife's suspicion? Oh, but, but, but that is that is all it is, Mimi. I, I told you that Magda was... Oh, good Lord, we can't go in and face her now. Oh, you're quite right, Dijin. Open the door. We can't face her. Oh, please be sensible. Oh, it's my best talent. Well, then, look, go quickly and meet me at the Tokyo waterfront tonight. Ask for Nicholas Chismigui's boat. I shall be waiting there for you. And how do you get rid of your wife? Drink and a sleeping pill? <laughs> Trust me. That's just the point. No, Mimi, Mimi, you, you can't come in. I am in. I've burned my boats even more thoroughly than you, Eugène. So I didn't want to leave any decisions up to you. What decisions? Oh, for example, which woman should you take into exile? Wife or mistress? You knew I made that choice. I was afraid that you had. So to be doubly sure, I eliminated any doubt. This is the gun, Eugène, equipped with a silencer. It's already been used. What? Magda is dead. There is only one woman in your life. Me. You and I are the ones who will meet and exchange identities with the Americans. Isn't that the way you really wanted it? Why, of course, my darling. Of course. Because that's the way it's going to be. <laughs> Your right, you will see the imposing monument in the shape of a cliff mounted on Horea's hill. This evokes the heroical days when Rugaria's independence was won, and this province of the Brugia was liberated and could join in union. Hmm, independence. Don't come, big brother, to the I take no chances. We're about to be home free. Everything all right, Mr. and Mrs. Lee. And so far, so good. Enjoying your tour? If you would come to the stern, please, I show you something special. You lead, we follow. If you look backwards to the right, there is the wildlife. To the left, on the other bank, are our fishing villages. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, we're behind you. It's hard to hear you. Because my voice is carried away on the wind. Why, I brought you here. Now, listen carefully. What about these other people? Dutch. No English. I have checked them out. We will stop for lunch soon. Check. There will be this restaurant. In the restaurant. Bathroom. Not for you. You go to the hotel. Fourth floor. Room 419. You have that? 419. Mm. That's where Zotescu and his wife will be. You change clothes. And they come back to the tour, replacing you, and proceed from there to freedom tomorrow. You stay in the hotel room, and tomorrow you will be contacted by Nicholas Chismigui. He will take you out into the Black Sea for a rendezvous with a helicopter to Turkey. I wish I could think of something to say. We've all said too much already. And everything is better not spoken. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Fisher. Better if not too many names. This is Mimi. Your wife. How do you do? 
I have pleasure to meet you also. Uh, can we talk? Uh, this room is safe. You... You have the passport? Yeah, yeah. You have the, uh, um, uh, what do you want to call it, the formula? In my head. Uh-huh. Uh, no film? All geniuses are careless. I have microfilm. Here. Mimi, how can no, you... No, it's we... okay, it's okay. It's a calculated risk. Some things must be taken on trust. If it's a double cross, who loses all that much, huh? Quid pro quo. All right, here are the passports. I hope we serve each other equally well. This is a tattoo. Mrs. Zetesco. Oh, oh, forgive me. So much on my mind. Uh, yes? Take my sun hat and my scarf. And my glasses. We're not all that much alike. Oh, we have to trust to, to our husband's similarity. An American tour group. There should be no problem. I'm sure there won't be. Good luck and goodbye. I hope in the end it will all be worth it. No question for me. I only hope for you, also. Well, darling, how do I look? I hate to tell you. You know the ads for diapers with the baby's tender body? Yeah, you think I don't feel that tender after scraping off that beard? Mm-hmm. Or for that matter, feel that naked? Oh, it's the way you look. Yeah, so we're agreed. I just hope it is all that funny in the last degree. You know, we sprung the professor. Now I just hope we can get out as easy. When do we go? Uh, tomorrow night. Oh, I wish it was tonight. Yeah, so do I. What do we do till then? I could go to sleep. I, I, I'm exhausted. Yeah, so am I. But how do we get there? I can't turn off my head. Oh, which reminds me. Give me a shoe. Huh? Good packages come in small things. Uh, uh, the, the, the right one, dream girl. Why not to reason why? That motto of the core. Observe. And far be it from me to suggest the shape of your heels, but one of them is loose. Ah, she then screws, and inside is a handy-dandy little place for secret documents. Oh, you sneaky son of a gun. Don't I have enough trouble with my shoes as it is? If the shoe fits, just wear it. That's a midday signal from somewhere. Oh. Where, where's the guy who's going to get us out of here? I don't know. Something's gone wrong. All right, hang in, baby. But suppose something has. What do we do? Well, we do have passports. We could just plain fly out. Without a plane reservation? No baggage? Out of the blue? What could they do? Our passports are valid enough. Who knows about the switch? Our hands are clean. Oh. There's a man now. I guess. I hope. Uh, who is it? Diana. Let me in. Uh, okay. Sure. Right away. Diana, what's the matter? No time to talk. Everything has gone wrong. What do you mean? Eugene and his mistress were stopped at immigration. They've been arrested. Arrest? Well, what do you mean, his mistress? She made two mistakes. The biggest of which was not taking out his wife with him. Trying to take his mistress instead. Well, what does that mean for us? We can't use Nicholas anymore. You, you mean we're trapped here? No. I came here in my brother's boat. I will see you to the meeting with the helicopter. I only hope we can make it. Where are we heading? To a state for you, I hope. And you? I'm committed now. I never thought I would leave my country again. Are you sure you're going to be able to? There's a rendezvous with a helicopter. You should make it, except... You sound doubtful. I'm afraid that gunboat is churning after us. What? Oh, can it catch us before we make the rendezvous? I think I see the helicopter coming in now. Oh, hooray for our side. For once, perhaps we'll win. You mean you're with us? What else? I'm only held by my relatives who could suffer because of me. Well, what about Vertescu? What about him? He lived under this regime, accepted his subjugation, used his prerogatives to make a life. I can't be sorry for him if he defected and it didn't work. No national resource like oil or coal or whatever is wrenched from the ground. It should be exploited for any individual profit. That is his problem. The fact that he got caught. Caught? Huh. I'm such a silly little thing. What? Well, the secretary who was checking for immigration remembered that your lady had such a small foot. A kind of Cinderella story which led to questions on both passports. 
Uh, we'd better catch this helicopter. Andy, off the starboard quarter. I think we're being overtaken. No, they're not in range yet. But that helicopter sure better get a move on before they are. Within machine gun range. Come on, Carol, get into the sling. I want you to go, Andy. Do what I tell you. All right. Anyway, you got the mic fulfilled. Andy, keep down. Don't lose your shoes, Cinderella. That's okay. They're letting down more slings. Come on, Diana. I'm not going. Don't be silly. You'll never have a better chance to leave. I can't. They don't need to take it out on my family. Hurry. You better get going before something. Diana. Everyone has problems, I suppose. We have plenty in America. Only somehow, I'd rather live with our problems. Wouldn't you? They opened the gates themselves, so we entered in. Those countries beyond the Iron Curtain, in this case, Bulgaria, a country of color and joy and wonder, once. Scarcely that now. It would be hard to conceive of a vampire in this country which first created that creature. There would be so little blood for him to drain from his own countrymen. Our cast included Paul Hecht, Martha Greenhouse, Ian Martin, and Bryna Rayburn. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.